Hello entrepreneurs. I hope you are having a wonderful day today. My name is Jamel Shuford. I am the Chief Events Officer at Prism Events and we are getting more into the event planning process today. Now, if you have not seen the videos for the previous steps, step one of creating your vision, step two, creating your budget, and then step three, a, which was all about how to write your proposals to get the best deals and the best proposals, the best quotes back from your vendors, then you need to go back, stop right now, go back, look at those videos, and then come back to me so that we can start moving right along. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to set up your planning timeline. So your timeline is going to be what task you have to get done and by when to make sure that when your event comes on that date that you are ready for it. So the first thing that you should consider when you are making your timeline is how much time you're going to have to dedicate to planning your event because it will vary based on your circumstances if you are doing this event by yourself and you have a full-time job or you're working in or on your business full-time and you're only going to have certain days of the week or maybe even a Saturday or something to do your, to plan your event, then you need to give yourself more time to plan your event. If you are going to have helpers, um, maybe staff members, employees, someone else that can help you get these things done and check these things off, you know, check the boxes on some of these things, then you may be able to shorten your planning timeline. But the timeline that I'm going to give you now and some of the suggestions that I'm going to give you will be based on one person planning this event that still has you know other things to do they have their full-time business that they are working on or or you know clients that they're working for they have something else that they have to do that pays the bills right now but they want to do this event so the timeline and the the timing that I'm going to give you is going to be under that assumption. So based on your circumstances, you can shorten it or lengthen it as much as you think you need to, to make sure you give yourself enough time to plan this event and plan it successfully. So when you're planning your event, there's like the pre-planning phase or what I will call the pre-planning phase. And then there is the getting into the details, getting everything done phase. And for the pre-planning phase, you want to make sure that you have things like your budget, your estimated budget done, which shouldn't take you more than a couple of weeks to get done. Um, you already know your vision because that's step one. Step two was creating your budget. So you should already have that done. Give yourself about two weeks, like I said, to do that. You should have your RFP process done. And your RFP process will include writing your RFP, sending it out, getting it back, negotiating with all of your vendors and signing the contract. Give yourself about two months to get that whole process done. Um, and again, you can shrink it or you can lengthen that time depending on what your circumstances are and how, how involved you're going to be with this process. So that's the pre-planning process. 
Now we get into the planning process. And for the planning process, you really need to make sure that you have your sequence of events, your sequence of tasks that have to be done and by when to make sure that when your event comes, at least two weeks before your event comes, the majority, 97, 8% of everything that you have to do for this event is done. Okay, so how do we do that, you say? So start with the date of your event. The date of your event is going to be your target. And at a certain point before your event, you need to have certain things done. So. I'm going to give you an estimated um, timeline. Again, it can lengthen or shorten based on your circumstances, but this is just a starting point for you. Okay, so I have my notes here, and we and I'm going to tell you about the uh, live event versus a virtual event and the timeline. Surprisingly, they will be similar. There are some things that you will need to put in your, your timeline for a live event that you would not for a virtual event, but they're going to be, but the, the, the timeline is going to be almost pretty similar. So some of the things, the major things that you should have in your timeline are things like um, when are you going to publish your website? As soon as you decide that you are going to have an event and as soon as you decide what your budget is going to be, you should start working on developing your website. There are lots of free website programs out there but you should at least start developing your website. And for a live event, you want your website to be published no later than six months before the date of your event to give you plenty of time to do you know, all of the stuff that you need to do, but your website should be up and running at least six months before. For your virtual event, you can give yourself about three to four months um, before your before your website is up. Now, if you are having a smaller event where you are, it's not a multi-day event. Maybe it's just a few hours, or maybe it's just one night uh, or one day. Uh, event, then you can put it on sites like Eventbrite and you, you'll be just fine. But if you're having a more complicated event where it's multiple, multiple days where there's um, a fairly large registration fee and something, you know, things like that, then you're going to have to have a nice professional website that will make people feel comfortable in putting out that money for your event. Next is marketing. You want to give yourself some time to market your event as well. Now for live events, um, you can pretty much start marketing, you know, from day one um, of your publishing date for your website. For your virtual event, I would say the month, maybe month and a half before your virtual event start marketing right away on you know every marketing medium you can the next thing that you want to make sure you do for your planning timeline is to finalize your speakers and get their speaker requirements now for a live event this is going to be done at least three months before to make sure that if there are any requirements for special AV or special power or um, they need a um, any type of special equipment that is not already included or not already accounted for in your budget, then you have the opportunity three months out to 
put it in your budget and tell the AV company or tell the hotel or whoever that you need to communicate with that, hey, I have this new requirement. I need to put it in um, for my event and, and you can roll with that. But at least three months before, I would say, get that done. For a virtual event, I would also say three months before because as you are um, talking to your speakers, their requirements may not be um, so much as AV, but you may need to communicate your requirements to them as far as maybe if you're just doing um, recorded um, virtual events or if you're going to do a hybrid between we're going to record your interview or record your presentation or your your keynote and then we're going to be on the chat live so this is what I'm going to need from you um, those things need to be communicated um, three months before because when you start marketing you may also want to have your speakers involved in marketing and you know the month or two before your event and say so that you can give them all of your marketing stuff all of your copy everything that you need to pat them to pass on to their people your timeline should also include your uh, food and beverage guarantees and also um, making sure that you check back in with your AV company just in case any of your AV thing, AV specifications have changed. So food and beverage, if you're doing a live event, then make sure that at least two months out, you've given your caterer or given your hotel what your food and beverage menu will be for your event. Now, we have a video all about food and beverage guarantees as well that you should check out to make sure that you, um, you understand what that is and what that entails. But two months before, just make sure that you've given them your menus, what you're going to want for breakfast, what you're going to want for lunch, and uh, maybe dinner or afternoon snack or whatever you're going to have, make sure you send that to them. On the AV side, you're making sure that you check back in with them based on your speaker requirements. If anything else has changed, then make sure you communicate that to them. So that's done at least two months before your event. What else do we have here? Oh, yes. If you're having an event that requires event materials or promo items that you have to order, then start that process two months before your event. And the process will entail um, making sure your graphics are correct, making sure your copy is correct without any spelling areas, er errors. <laughs> Make sure that you have your logos in the right places and you sign off on it and then you have it shipped. One thing that you need to keep in mind is some places, some venues will charge you a storage fee and a handling fee to when you ship boxes to them before your event. Now, two weeks before your event is what I call your final countdown. And there are several things that you need to do within the two weeks before your event to make sure that everything is in place, everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing, and you know, if there's any last minute questions or last minute things you need to do, then you are you're focused and you're ready to do it one week before your event you need to make sure that you've you've talked to all of your vendors and you've had your vendor meetings you've had your staff meetings everyone knows exactly 
what they need to do at least one week before your event. So these are just really the main items that, um, that will be on your planning timeline just to give you an idea of how to create your timeline. I suggest that you subscribe to our channel and turn your notifications on so you will know when the next video is coming out. I will see you soon, guys. Bye.